system R of uh, R of X R X of T tau has expected value of X of T times X complex conjugate of T plus tau. Okay, so that's uh, that's the that's the definition of autocorrelation function. How should you understand it? Well, let's take let's draw a couple of couple of uh, graphs. Here. So I have some random process. Here are the different realizations of this process. This is x1 of t, x2 of t, x uh, n of t, and so on. And I look at the value here. This is x of t. This here is x of t plus tau. x1 of t, x1 of t plus tau. So I form a product x1 of t times x1 of t plus tau and a complex conjugate that one. It's not important for real signals, but when signals are complex, then it starts playing it off. So I take this, I move tau away, and then I take the value of the signal there, and then I multiply that. And this is a new variable. Let me call this now y of t. <coughs> or y of t tau, y1 of t tau. Now, I do same here. So I get x2 of t times x2 complex conjugate of t plus tau. And I call that y2 of t tau. And so on. <coughs> xn of t times xn complex conjugate of t plus tau. And this is y n of t tau. Now, this is now a new variable that will have its own distribution, right? And then I'm looking at the expected value of this random variable. So, in a sense, I'm looking at the expected value of y of t tau, which is uh, integral uh, over all possible y t tau times PDF y t tau d y. So, get uh, y over all possible y. So I'm looking at the expected value of this guy. Just for the sake of completeness, finish this joint. Now, how does this capture the time domain behavior? Well, look at these two cases. And, and let's take a look at small tau. If I look at the small tau, in this case, the two values are going to be very much the same. right? For small tau, this signal is slow. So the values that are separated by small tau are very much the same. So this product is always going to be large, or, or it's at least going to be of the same size. Right? Now, if I look at this one, you know, even for small tau, the, this value has nothing to do with this one. We say, in this case, for small tau, the values are uncorrelated. They can be anything. But here, you know, for small tau, the values are correlated. So if I know the value of the function at this time, I can pretty much guess what happens, you know, a little bit away. Right? So if I can guess, that means that uh, I'm capturing some sort of time domain behavior, right? If my autocorrelation function is slowly moving, uh, or, or, or it does not depend, uh, does not change rapidly as a function of tau, then my signal is slowly moving in time. We're going to go through this in more detail, but for right now, look at this function here, understand what it is. Now, we can now define based on the autocorrelation function, again, two classes of signal, right? We can, we can say, if this autocorrelation function does not depend on t, in other words, I'm just, it only depends on tau, then the process is stationary, right? No matter where I start looking at the 
uh, out of correlation, I'm going to get the same values as a function of tau. The process is stationary. If the outer correlation function changes as a function of t, the process is non stationary. So you have, and, and we're talking about time domain now. So if r of t tau depends only on tau, the process is stationary in the time domain. So let me just summarize that. It's going to take just a minute. So I have, again, black and white. I have R T R X T tau is equal to R of X of tau does not depend on T. That kind of process is station. The flip side is Rx stationary in time domain. If Rx t of tau depends on t, process is non stationary. And then the final definition, if, if the process is stationary in both amplitude and time domain, it is stationary in the strict sense. Questions? Okay, let me give you some exercises. So it's uh, 618, 619, 620, 621, 624, 625, and 629. Okay. When we when we come back next time, I'm gonna finish the, the random processes and then we're going to do a review for the determinism.